Hello viewers, welcome to my channel, I'm Hashim Ali Khan. In this video, I'm going to explain you about the topic trial balance in the subject accounting. I have selected this topic because trial balance is a very easy chapter compared to other chapters. Easily the students can be able to understand how to make the trial balance, the meaning of trial balance, why it is prepared, then how to prepare this trial balance. All these points will be cleared after watching this video. So this uh, topic of trial balance is very important for all the students of IGCSC, including uh, Cambridge as well as Excel students. So before starting, before the explanation of this topic of trial balance, I expect my viewers to take a screenshot of the points which I have written on the board so that you can be able to have a permanent record of all the points, how to make the trial balance. After noting down, then I'll give the explanation about the trial balance. Huh. So trial balance, it's a statement which shows all the ledger account balances. So before that, I'll uh, start from the beginning. The accounting process will begin with recording the entries in the books of original entry through business documents. So by using the business documents, first of all, the entries are recorded in books of original entry. So after recording in the books of original entry, periodically it will be posted to ledger accounts. So this recording and posting, the process will go on throughout the year. At the end of the year, all the accounts should be closed. Balancing should be done. So some accounts may show debit balance, some accounts, ledger accounts may show credit balance. Now we want the, all the debit balances and credit balances. And we put all the debit and credit balances of ledger accounts in a statement. And that statement is called a trial balance. The trial balance will be prepared before making the financial statements. The financial statements consist of income statement and statement of financial position. So before preparing this financial statements, this trial balance will be prepared. So first of all, I'm going to explain you about the meaning of the term trial balance, then objectives. What is the objective of making this trial balance? How to make the trial balance? Then what are the advantages and limitations of this trial balance? Then suspense account, why it is prepared, how it is prepared, then the points to be noted while preparing the trial balance. All these are the things I'm going to explain you in detail in this video. So watch the video till the end to get the complete command on this topic of trial balance. The so first of all meaning, it is a statement containing all the ledger balances. First of all, it is not an account. Trial balance is only a statement which listed down all the debit and credit balances of the ledger accounts. Balance of all ledger accounts at a given date. On a particular moment of time the trial balance is prepared on a particular date it is arranged as debit and credit columns placed side by side side by side we make one column debit column another column credit column take all the debit balances in debit column and credit balances in credit column this is this statement is called a trial balance the objective of preparing the trial balance why the trial balance is prepared the trial balance is prepared to check the arithmetical accuracy of the books of accounts. Whether arithmetically all the accounts are correct or not, to check that we will make the trial balance. Suppose if there are any errors committed while posting the entries, while making posting from books of original entry to ledger accounts, if there are any errors, then the trial balance total debit and credit will not be same. So whenever the total of debit column and total of credit column is not equal, not same, then it is concluded that there are some errors in the ledger posting. So simply the objective of this uh, trial balance is to check the arithmetical accuracy of the ledger posting. Now the fundamental principle of double entry system of bookkeeping. 
So we follow double entry system of bookkeeping. In this double entry system, for every transaction, one account is debited, the other account is created. So two aspects are there in every transaction. One account will be debited, other account will be created with equal amount. Right? So this is the fundamental principle of double entry system. So we, uh, what are the debit amounts we have taken? The same amount will take in the credit column. So how much we have debited? The same amount will be created. In other words, the total of uh, debits and the total of credits must be equal. That is the fundamental principle of double entry system of bookkeeping. So in trial balance, we are taking all debits in one column, all credits in another column. If there are no errors in ledger posting, then the total of debit and credit will be equal. Now, therefore, the total of debit balance must be equal to the total aggregate of the credit column. The agreement of trial balance signifies if the trial balance agrees, the total of debit side and total of credit side both are equal. It signifies that there are no errors in the ledger posting. Arithmetically, the transactions are correct. If the trial balance does not agree, it suggests that there are some errors. Suppose if the total of debit and total of credit are not equal, it suggests that there are some errors in the ledger postings. And those errors must be detected and it should be rectified before preparing the financial statements. So, before going to prepare the financial statements, first of all, we want to be sure that there are no errors in the books of account. To check that we are making the trial balance. The main function of trial balance is that it acts as a device to check the arithmetical accuracy of the accounting process. The main purpose of making the trial balance is to check whether arithmetically all the entries are correct or not. Now, advantage. The main advantage of this trial balance is after making trial balance, it is very easy to make the financial statements. The financial statement consists of income statement and statement of financial position. So this trial balance will facilitate, will help, will help in making the financial statements. Without trial balance also we can make the financial statements but it will be a time consuming process. Suppose if we make the trial balance easily we can make the financial statement that is the advantage of trial balance. But the limitations of financial uh, trial balance, the limitation of trial balance is it is not a conclusive proof. That means all the errors will not be detected in the trial balance. Sometimes even the trial balance will tally, but still there may be some errors. So it's not a complete proof that there are no errors in the books of accounts. Sometimes even the trial balance tallies, there may be some errors in the books of accounts. Simple words you can say, <coughs> all the errors are not detected through the trial balance. Suspense account. Sometimes trial balance will not agree. But we are in a hurry to make the financial statements. So temporarily, the difference between debit and credit column, that difference will be put in a new account called suspense account. So suspense account is a temporary account which is opened only when the trial balance is not tallying. Suppose the total on the debit side is 10,000, credit side it is 9,000. So credit side only 9,000 total. Debit side 10,000 total, the total is not tallying, 1,000 is the difference. That 1,000 difference will be put in a new account called suspense account. So temporarily we make the trial balance tallied by using the suspense account. Later on, later on we find out where are the errors, we detect, we find out where are the errors. After rectifying the errors, the suspense account will get closed. Suspense account will get closed. Now suspense account sometimes it may show debit balance, sometimes it may show credit balance. Suppose if the errors are not detected and rectified, suspense account is still showing a balance. That balance will be shown in the statement of financial position. 
in the statement of financial position we show the balance in suspense account if the suspense account shows debit balance it will be taken on the asset side if the suspense account shows credit balance it will be taken on the liability side so here I have shown I have written here if suspense account shows debit balance asset side if suspense account shows credit balance it will be taken on the liability side so once the errors are rectified the suspense account will get closed now last thing in this video is regarding points to be noted while preparing the trial balance the points to be noted what are the points the first one accounts dealing with assets expenses and losses debit balance so always remember in the next video i am going to explain you about the problems on trial balance but here remember the points how to make the trial balance the first rule all assets expenses losses debit balance then all uh, accounts dealing with liabilities, incomes and gains, credit balance. So assets, expenses and losses, debit balance. Liabilities, incomes and gains, credit balance. Capital or equity, we can call it as capital or we can call it as equity, always shows credit balance. Drawings. The amount withdrawn by the owner for personal use is called drawings. It will show debit balance. Sales, sales revenue. Sales revenue or simply revenue, credit balance. Sales return, debit balance. Purchases, debit balance. Purchase returns, credit balance. Depreciation, debit balance. Provision for depreciation, credit balance. Then irrecoverable debt, debit balance. Allowance for irrecoverable debt, credit balance. Then opening inventory, opening stock. So opening inventory, debit balance. Normally, generally closing stock will not appear in trial balance. Even if it is given in the problem, don't take closing stock or closing inventory in the trial balance. Opening inventory, it will be taken in debit column. The last one accrued expenses. It is also called outstanding expenses. It is a liability. So credit balance. Accru accrued expenses, credit balance. Whereas prepayment, prepayment expenses. Prepayment means paid in advance. Prepaid. So prepayment expenses, debit balance. So these are the points you have to remember while making while making a travels. The first one is all assets, expenses, losses, debit balance. Second point is all liabilities, incomes and gains, credit balance. Capital or equity, credit balance. Drawings, debit balance. Sales revenue, credit balance. Sales return, debit balance. Remember this, sales revenue, credit balance. Sales return, debit balance. Purchases, Debit balance, purchase return, credit balance. Only depreciation if it is given, debit balance. Provision for depreciation if it is given, credit balance. Irrecoverable debt, only irrecoverable debt is given, debit balance. Allowance for irrecoverable debt, credit balance. Similarly, opening inventory, debit balance. Closing inventory generally will not be taken in the trial balance. Last one, accrued expenses. Credit balance, prepayment of expenses, debit balance. That's all. So, in this video, I have explained you the theoretical part, the theoretical part of the chapter trial balance. I have explained you the meaning of the term trial balance. It's a statement which is prepared to check the arithmetical accuracy of the books of accounts. If the total of debits and total of credits are equal, then we can say the books of accounts are arithmetically correct. There are no errors in the books of accounts. That is the objective of making the trial balance. We take all debit balances and all credit balances. We'll put it side by side and take the total. That is the trial balance. Advantage by making the trial balance, it will be easier to make the financial statements. 
consisting of income statement and statement of financial position very easy to make the financial statements but the limitation of trial balance is all the errors will not be disclosed it may happen that there are some errors even after the trial balance is tallied that is the limitation suspense account is a temporary account which is opened when the trial balance is not tallying if the total of debit and total of credit are not equal the difference will be put in a new account called suspense account later on when the errors are located and rectified this suspense account will get closed so if the suspense account is still there all the errors are not rectified then this suspense account balance will be taken in statement of financial position if the suspense account shows debit balance take it on a set side if the suspense account shows credit balance take it on the liability side then after this last point i have discussed about the points to be noted while making the trial balance that's it so this is the end of the theoretical part of the topic trial balance inshallah in the next video i'll start the problems on trial balance